How you doing, y'all? I don't I haven't did a video and I, I skipped 2023, but I got this little it says circle uh, cutter, Pexto. Check this out. This little baby is nice, man. I got it. It's uh, so it's heavier than I thought it was. This is a a big one, man. But uh, I got it mounted here. I painted the base green. I think that was the color. The basic. Th this is a uh, hunter green, and it looks in here like uh, close to the the original color, which a little darker. As I look at them, I you know you want to get them back. I like to get them back. Well, I keep them the way I get them, but it's nice if I'm going to paint anything to paint it uh, the uh, original color. Somebody painted it yellow and then gray, and then uh, I made this right here. This here is a workstation. They turn. I got this one right here. It's a nice little uh, uh, wiring machine. This one says... Uh, November 12th, 1867. And uh, I collected these, you know, throughout my lifetime. Old now, but it was fun collecting this stuff. All uh, sheet metal work. And I'm trying to get everything set up and uh, so that they're in a position I, I'm thinking about getting some 20 gauge or maybe 22, 24 and try uh, uh, using, forming up some sheet metal. This one uh, is the Niagara. This is the only, this would be like a 632 if it was a uh, Pexto. But this particular one is a beater. And. Uh, it's pretty nice. A lot of this stuff I've had so long that it was all froze up. I got it out here and lubricating everything, keeping everything going. Here's a, a little tiny beater. It's a cute little thing. It's got small dies. Uh, over here, I think this was a first one uh, station that I put together and this one I think it's hard to tell well this is a hall and carpenter most of this stuff's very early I think this is all pre-civil war uh, with the open gears and the uh, brass plate on top these cast iron pieces it's another little uh, beating machine and uh, this one here this is a really nice crimping machine you got your little crimpers it's got a pretty pretty good sized bull gear on it this one's nice I, I think this one's probably like more from the the probably the 40s but this is a more heavy duty one I got this one up here this is an earlier one it's uh, got the open ears let me see maybe I should come around here where the sun shines better. I, uh, the top part up here is uh, everything rotates. I built it like a, a workstation so you can actually I can actually use these if I get some metal. But this is another crimp crimper. It's uh, most of this stuff. Well, everything works, but uh, it may not be. Uh, quite uh, maybe a couple pieces missing here and there <laughs> this is a Niagara wiring machine this one's nice got the Niagara stand And uh, there's another one of those early beaters. This one here is uh, 
1867, and I think it's sitting on a Hexco uh, machine support. This one, you know, I'm not sure. I think it might be this one, which was patented in uh, 1859. I got one here. This is, this is pretty cool. This uh, is uh, the uh, the stop to hold the metal. This makes it go up and down. You can see where the where the metal rode on that little groove right there. Here's another nice one, friend of mine. This is the, the latest one I got. I think this one's eight, uh, 1896. And I don't know. This this one may be the yeah. This is the 59. I think. I don't know. It's hard to see it. I'm not. I'm not very good at this, but. It's a, a top die is missing. We got something in here, I'm not sure, but here we're back to the carpenter. Here's a nice little unit here I got, which I think this was a homemade and, and they did a pretty nice job on it. And then we'll go back here is uh, what I'm working on right now. I'm trying something a little different. This is gonna be another workstation, which is spin around. We all, anybody wants to make a uh, piece like this. Uh, I found out that uh, two and a half inch uh, fits right over two inch. This inside part here, pipe is two inch, and the uh, outside is two and a half. And I, I believe, you know, I'm not sure the schedules, I've been looking at them. I got a couple more right there, but some of it I found a schedule 40, <coughs> excuse me, has a little bit of a, a little bit more of a gap. You can see this one fits pretty good. It spins nice, of course there's no weight on it. And uh, I tried this one a little different. I got the support arms down lower, but this one isn't made uh, for the uh, uh, the the machine uh, supports, the factory machine supports all the the uh, uh, cast iron. These these things right here. This is an early one. Let's see. Gotta keep me. This is a Pexo. And this one here is a maple wood. I put a Pexo early uh, wiring machine on it. Uh, I have the maple wood machine that goes on top of it, but it's uh, missing a couple parts. Here's your Niagara. And, uh, oh yeah, this other thing I wanted to show you. The other day my, my nephew came over and he gave me this. And this is nice right here. It's another uh, wiring machine. I lubricated it up, supported it out here. Now this one, I didn't put the uh, four inch flat bar on the bottom of it because uh, I, I was still building the supports and you can see that it kind of vibrates a little bit. When I did this one over here, it was uh, this. Now this one's cons uh, it's actually 10 inches bigger, but it's considerably heavier. And it was uh, vibrating quite a bit. Believe it or not, that uh, four inch flat bar I put there on the bottom, 
really stiffened it up pretty good. So I went and did one on this side. I bought a 20 foot length of four edge flat bar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it on all of them. Like this one's got the four inch under it. This one doesn't have it yet, but I think I'll put it under there too. And uh, stiffen stuff up a little bit. Tell you, I got a lot of weight hanging off the front of this trailer. This baby is, uh, it's looking good, man. We are, I, I started this, I'll tell you the truth. It was, it was uh, this year, I got all this stuff out. I did a lot of other stuff, uh, which I'm gonna show in a different video. But uh, this one, I, I got into my, I've had, I got like a, you know, if you have a pile of tools, what are you, a collector or a hoarder? So my whole deal was I went through my stuff here about three months ago, started uh, inventorying it and stacking it all up and, and seeing what I got. Uh, and uh, apparently I, I, I could have the old uh, uh, rust disease. These are uh, uh, still a pile. That's why I'm building a third one to uh, to put all my machines up here. And uh, I got some of these setting down machines. A couple early ones you can see there. This one here is the this is the maple wood. Whoops, upside down. Look at that. There you got the maple wood. That one goes on that other standard. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, I come out here and tinker. Been a little under the weather last week or so. But, uh, I'm getting back out here and, uh, hopefully I can strike an art and, uh, start putting something together again. This is my, my little, uh, fixture table. I got a fabricator's fixture table. You believe that I was a fabricator all my life, and uh, nah, I just got this. Uh, shoot, must have been uh, November, December last year. And man, let me tell you, these are the greatest things you have ever seen. I'm like, what the heck? I've been retired for over 10 years, going on 11 years now, and uh, apparently, these things, as far as I could tell, started coming out like about 15 years ago. And I, uh, I remember I worked at a place we had the acorn tables. You know, those are the two-inch square holes, and uh, we had one, but we never used it. And what I always did, we would our workbench would be a, a four foot by eight feet piece of one-inch plate, and we would just lay whatever we were making full scale on the table, get some drop behind a shear, and just uh, weld tabs onto the table to make stuff. But this is a your fixture table. So what I, I I really watched a lot of YouTube videos with all the fixture tables and how people were doing them, and I noticed that almost every one of them was stacked their fixtures on one corner of the fixture table. Now I got this probably the smallest one they make, two feet by three feet. But I went with a half inch plate because. Uh, they, uh, Harbor Freight sells one, I think it's it's either eighth inch or three sixteenths, and they make them up to quarter. But uh, let me tell you, if you're gonna get one of these things, you wanna make it usable, this this uh, half inch is the way to go. They uh, they make really, really good ones uh, that are cast iron. This is the best way to go because cast iron is, is just a really stable material. Whereas this is just mild steel. But let me tell you, it is up my game. It has made things so much easier. So what I did was I made my fixture holder to get everything off the table. And so uh, went to Harbor Freight, got got their little uh, $3.50 $3 holders, just cut the end off and welded a piece of 5.8 five uh, round bar. Now I just used a uh, hot roll. You, you take hot roll, and you can see the piece of sticking through here. 
and you buff the mill scale off and this hole right here these little holes are, are 16 millimeters and 16 millimeters I believe is is three or four or five thousandths over five eighths and that's all the tolerance you need this is a five eighths bolt and it just falls in there this is a five eighths uh, round bar it fell in there pretty good it fits a lot tighter than uh, than the bolts the bolts are actually undersized so what I did here on my uh, uh, fixture uh, support structure that I built here I conglomerated together I, I uh, put a half inch pipe in there and drilled them all out 41 64 so everything fits in here pretty good and made a bunch of different ones and uh, you know you you get what you need as you go but man I'm gonna tell you right now these uh, fixture tables will up your game if you're into fabricating and making stuff it's the only way to go and then and then, I know this one's too small but I'm just a little tinkering around here in the backyard is good enough for me been using those little uh, uh, work benches that I made to come off and none of them are any bigger than this so I'm gonna tell you there's a, there's a guy here out of Sacramento and uh, he's a smart young kid just a young guy I think he's like 30 years old really and he's selling these things here in Northern California he sold this one to me for 400 bucks which uh, is uh, made with a uh, uh, laser what do you say? Was laser cut by a uh, computer control, which I guess it really holds it. He he held it square, and I can't figure out what he did because uh, there is some kind of surface on it, and uh, I can't tell if it's a mill scale or what. But uh, the kid sells everything you want. He sells the the three sixteenths plates, the quarter inch plates, the whatever. All the way up to the uh, five by tens, five foot by ten foot, which really works good uh, for really large things, you know. Which uh, I don't plan on get into that. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. It's been a long time, and this video is long enough. We'll see you later. Bye.